Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this beautiful day that the Lord has made as we gather together in our homes to worship the Lord and to learn from his word. Uh, this day is a special day. We honor the many who have paid the ultimate price for the freedom that we get to enjoy today, and we thank the Lord for that. We do not take it for granted. In John chapter 15, verse 13, God's word says, there is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And so many have done that. We also thank God the Father for the gift of his precious son, Jesus Christ, whom he willingly gave for us in our place. We thank Jesus today for giving his life for us, laying down his life in our place so that we could experience true freedom. And as we join together during this time, I welcome you to set aside everything that would try to distract you from being focused on honoring the Lord today. And would you turn your hearts to God? Would you turn your minds toward him? And would you join together now as we welcome the presence of his Holy Spirit right wherever you are gathering together today? Let's pray. Father, we are so grateful for this wonderful privilege we have to honor you. We come into your presence, Lord, this morning, thanking you for the many ways that you have shown yourself faithful to us. We don't take the wonderful gifts that you've given to us for granted. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of eternal life. Today, we, mem we remember the many who have laid down their lives so that we could experience freedom. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would continue to help us to be willing to demonstrate a sacrificial love for others. I pray that what you have done for us would challenge each one of us to daily live a life that is fully surrendered for your sake and for the sake of others around us. As we join together, Lord, in just a few moments to lift up your name and to worship you, we welcome the presence of your spirit to fill every home. We pray that if there be any challenges that may even right now be occurring in homes all across this area that would try to pull us away from devoting this time to you, Lord, I pray that your spirit would help each one of us to be focused on honoring you. We love you, Lord, and we worship you. We want to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your presence that is here with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you join with us now as my wife shares a word from God's word from Psalm chapter 92 as we prepare our hearts to worship the Lord together. Psalm 92, verse 1 says, It's so enjoyable to come before you with uncontainable praise spilling over from our hearts. How we love to sing our praises over and over to you, the matchless God, high and exalted over all. Melodies of praise will fill the air as every musical instrument, along with every heart, overflows with worship. Let's worship God this morning, church family. Good morning, church family. It's so good to come together again and worship the Lord. Looking forward to seeing some faces soon. Um, as things are starting to change a little bit, I look forward to seeing you next week in your car windows. There'll be lots of waving and smiling, so I look forward to that next week. But for now, I'm just ready to worship the Lord with you this morning in your homes. And again, I encourage you to get your family up and moving and um, get ready to worship him this morning. Amen. Strong now shaken, 
we trust forever in your name, the name of Jesus. Almighty God. Before we sing the next song, I want to share something that's been stirring in my soul lately. I was watching a documentary um, about our planet, planet Earth, and there was a lot of science behind it, and they kept explaining how the Earth came into being and how amazing it was that just coincidentally things came together. And the science that they kept explaining how, can you just imagine the gases and the masses coincidentally coming together and creating this amazing planet called Earth? And I sat there and I thought to myself, how can we deny the greatness of God and equate it to science? And if somebody can have faith in coincidence, and things coming together and creating this great earth. Why is their faith not in our creator, the God Almighty, who created heaven and earth? And it just started stirring up in my soul how amazing this earth is and how there is no doubt that there is a God who created it. 
And I just want to share a verse with you this morning as we begin to sing this next song about the greatness of our Creator. Psalm 19.1, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky displays what his hands have made. And I'm sure we all have friends who have faith in science. But wouldn't it be great if we had the opportunity to take that moment and share with them the faith in God and faith in our Creator. And as you look around, as the sun is shining and the flowers and the trees are blooming, let's not forget who created all of this. That it wasn't coincidence that our Creator had a plan and a purpose for this planet and for us. And so let's celebrate that this morning.
God, as they cry out to you.
heart may reflect you, oh God. Jesus, we ask that you show us your glory this morning. As the sun is shining on the outside, physically, oh God, we ask that your son, Jesus, shine within us this morning and show us your glory. We invite your presence. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are the creator of the universe and that you created each and every one of us and that you have a plan and a purpose. Jesus. And that everything came into being because you are our creator. And we worship you this morning. And we thank you, God. We thank you for giving us life. We thank you for saving us. And we thank you, God, that you show us the way. And so we look to you this morning as we continue to seek you, oh God. May your fire fall down on every home and every person who is lifting their eyes to you today. Jesus, we thank you. What a wonderful time of praise and worship that was. And I love that last song, Fire Fall Down. And that's my prayer for you today, that you will feel the power of the Holy Spirit right there in your home. Did you know even next Sunday is called Pentecost Sunday, which is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. Prepare your hearts, prepare your spirit. You never know what God's going to do in your life as we prepare for Pentecost Sunday, next Sunday. Anyways, I'm here to give the morning announcement. So our first announcement today is due to the Memorial Day holiday weekend, there will be no prayer meeting tonight. We encourage you to spend time with your family. And also this coming week, we're going to continue with Zoom classes Tuesday night is discipleship class, Wednesday night Bible study, the book of Isaiah, Thursday we've got something for the young adults, and then we end the week with our youth joining in with the Zoom youth group Friday at 6.30. Also, men and women, take note of the Zoom IDs for Sunday school class next Sunday as well. Great. All set with the morning announcement. So next we're going to do our tithes and offerings. And so this morning, God put a verse upon my heart, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And I'm going to read it in the NLT, which is the New Living Translation. And this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. As you are faithful in your tithes, 10% of your earnings, and you give that back to God. As you're faithful in offerings, which includes ministries from within the church, as well as our missionaries all around this world, God, God's word says that he will continue to provide for all your needs. Amen. So as you can see right there on your screen, there's different ways that you can give this morning. You can go to our church website, clc413.com forward slash online dash giving. Or you can do the second option, which is simply get out your cell phone and text the word give, G-I-V-E, to this number, 413 213 Three seven seven seven, or you can simply mail your check here to Christian Life Center, Sumner Ave, here in Springfield, Massachusetts. Thank you for giving, church family. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. 
God, we just praise and worship your holy name. We thank you, God. This is the day that you have made. We can rejoice in you. We can praise you, God. We can worship you, Lord, with singing. And we can also worship you this morning, God, by giving of our tithes and our offerings for our missionaries. Oh, God, I pray for our missionaries around this world, oh, God, that you will be their Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides. Would you provide financially for our missionaries? Would you continue to protect them supernaturally by your mighty power? Would you continue to give them health in their bodies, oh God? Husbands, wives, the children, Lord, that are on the mission field, God, all around this world. Bless our missionaries. Lord, I pray a special blessing upon every family member, Lord, that's watching this morning. Every church member, God, every single person, God, that is part of our CLC family. Oh, God, as they give to you from their earnings, oh, God, as they put you first, Father, in the tithe, God, would you open up the windows of heaven and bless them? Would you pour them out a blessing, as your word says, that they will not be able to even contain it. You are a supernatural God, and I thank you, God, that you will provide for each need of each person in our church family and those listening today. Thank you, God. You are a faithful God. We love you, and we worship you this morning by giving our tithes and offerings. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Thank you so much, church family. Thank you so much for giving. You are faithful giving. God sees what you're doing, and he will honor you, and he will continue to provide for your every need this morning. Thank you once again. All right. At this time, I want to introduce to you Walt Lysak as he sings a song about Jesus called, I Know a Man Who Can. Enjoy the song this morning. God bless. I can't take a heart that's broken Make it over again But I know a man who can And I can't take a soul that's sin sick Make it wide as a snow But I know a man who can Some call him Savior The Redeemer of all men I call him Jesus Cause he's my dearest friend If you feel no one can help you and your life is out of hand. I know a man who can. I can't walk upon these waters or calm the troubled sea. But I know a man. Who can? And I can't cause blind eyes to open or make the lame to walk again. But I know a man who can. Some call him Satan. The Redeemer of all men I call Him Jesus Cause He's my dearest friend If you feel no one can help you And your life feels out of hand I 
Thank you, Walt, for that wonderful song. Aren't you glad that you know Jesus? I am really looking forward to next Sunday as we gather together in our parking lot. And I invite you not only to bring uh, your own vehicle and to come prepared to be ministered to by the word of the Lord and to worship him, uh, but also to invite a friend, uh, ask them to follow you in their car to church. And we're going to have a wonderful time gathering together, worshiping the Lord. We have evangelist Greg Hubbard, who is a man who is passionate about God and passionate about people. And we're so thankful that he's able to come to be with us on Pentecost Sunday. You won't want to miss this special service. Uh, we are also going to be live streaming it for those who may not be able to join us. Uh, but I look forward uh, to seeing you next Sunday as we gather together uh, in our church drive-in. Well, you and I are God's construction project, and we are still under construction. Like the song says, he's still working on me. It took him only days to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and how patient he must be. He's still working on me, and I'm so thankful that he's working in my life. And aren't you glad that he's working in yours? And we're going to allow him to continue that work this morning as we dive into his word together. Would you join with me as we turn our hearts toward the Lord in prayer? Father, I thank you for every single person that is watching this morning. And I pray for a special touch of your presence. I pray for clarity of speech to be able to communicate your word. And I pray that every one of us will be able to understand what your spirit is saying to your church. Lord, I pray that your words would come alive to us and that we would be able to grasp how you would want us to put to practice the things that you have to share with us uh, from your heart today. We love you, Lord, and we thank you that you have good plans for us and we choose to submit ourselves to those plans. May your work be accomplished in us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, last week we looked at phase one and uh, making sure that we have a firm foundation that's critical. The building uh, of any structure is so dependent upon the foundation. And as we saw last week, that even if the best materials are used, if there's not a good foundation, uh, then the building will not last for long. The firm foundation is Jesus Christ, the living word of God. In Isaiah chapter 28, verse 16, God's word says, This is what the sovereign Lord says. Look, I am placing a foundation stone in Jerusalem, a firm and tested stone. It is a precious cornerstone that is safe to build on. Whoever believes need never be shaken. I want to just share with you a little bit about uh, a place that is safe to build on. Now, can you imagine if uh, you have uh, a place that your friend has called you to visit? He's very excited. He, he's, he's got a new place and he says, hey, would you come on over? I want you to see this place. And so with great anticipation, you drive to his property. You get out of your car and there he is. Your friend is sitting on the top of a concrete slab, a level, a strong and solid concrete slab. As you approach, he says, here it is. What do you think? This is my place. Have you ever seen such a solid foundation? This is absolutely wonderful. You may ask him, well, I thought you might have some sort of building on this foundation. A building? Oh, no, he says. This is it. This is all I need. Building a house, after all, takes a lot of work. And I have to buy materials and I have to put it all together. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to spend so much time and energy uh, building a building on this foundation, I am content just to sit here and enjoy my foundation. Now, that would be quite foolish, wouldn't it? 
If you have a great foundation, but you never build the walls, the roof, the rooms, the doors, or the windows, your living arrangements will be greatly lacking. You're exposed to so many things you could otherwise easily avoid. Those who have come to follow Jesus have placed themselves on the solid rock, the firm foundation. This is a great start, but it's not where it ends. The construction process does not end with the foundation. It only begins there. Materials are needed to continue the building project. So today we are moving from the often hidden work of the foundation to the more visible phase in phase two. We're going to look at the materials used to build on top of a solid rock foundation. We are going to be looking at choosing our materials wisely. Choosing our materials wisely. Would you please turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to read uh, from verses 9 to 15. 1 Corinthians 3 verses 9 to 15. It says, you are God's building. Because of God's grace given to me, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials, gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. But on the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. Sobering words from the word of the Lord for us this morning. And we're going to uh, unpack that little by little. You may remember the story of the three little pigs. The three little pigs. There was a one pig that decided to build a house out of straw. He got to work, got done real quick, and there was his beautiful straw house. The second little pig uh, built a house out of wood and uh, finished not as quick as the first one, uh, but it didn't take him too long, got his house all set up, and he was fine with what he had uh, built and created. And the third little pig, he decided he wasn't going to build with straw or with wood, but he was going to build with bricks. And so he ended up building a very strong brick house. And then came the day when the big bad wolf came along. And uh, then he said to the little pig in house number one, he said, let me in. And of course, the pig wouldn't let him in. So he said, I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. And that's exactly what he did. So the little pig ran to the second pig's house to try to have some safety there. And the wolf came over to the second pig's house and said, let me in. And he said, no way, I'm not going to let you in. And uh, the wolf said, I'm going to huff and puff and blow your house down. And that's exactly what he did for the second house as well. And both little pigs went to the third house and said, you know what, our houses are completely ruined. Uh, we would like to stay in yours for a little bit. There's a big bad wolf out there. And we need some protection. Well, lo and behold, the uh, wolf came over to the third house and he said, let me in. And the wolf said, no, or the uh, third little pig said, no, you're not coming in here. And he said, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And he tried and he couldn't do it because the house was strong. And then the wolf decided to try to climb down the chimney and was met with a very unpleasant surprise. 
you and I have choices to make in the building materials that we use for what we construct with the help of the Holy Spirit upon the solid foundation of the Word of God, Jesus Christ. Now, there are many uh, different types of materials uh, that you can use to build a house. There are houses that are built out of brick, houses that are built with wooden logs, a beautiful log cabins. And look at that. Have you ever seen that? A house made out of rubber tires. And then there's the house that is made out of grass. And if you go to northern Portugal, you can find this house built between four large boulders. I wonder how long it took to build that one. Then you have the house that is literally made with mud. A house that is built out of straw. House that is built out of ice and snow. Houses that are built out of tin. Houses that have complex steel structures. Houses that are made out of concrete. I remember when I was on a missions trip, we actually assisted in building a concrete structure and it went multiple stories high. It was, uh, had rebar in it and um, it was quite curious to watch their construction because it was so different than what we're used to over here. Uh, but it stood firm and it was a, a very solid piece of uh, construction. And then uh, there is, believe it or not, houses that are made out of plastic. Uh, this one here, for example, is a prefab plastic house made in Mexico. It's resistant to earthquakes. And then if you were to travel to Yangon, Myanmar, you will find the Shwedagon Pagoda. It's covered in gold, and the rooftop has 4,531 diamonds, equivalent to a 72-carat diamond. And then there is a house made out of recycled paper, of all things. I wonder what the uh, fire insurance cost for that house would be. And high atop a 7,970-foot mountain ridge in Peru sits a city built by the Incas called Machu Picchu. Built around the year 1450, the construction at the site is absolutely incredible. To this day, experts don't know how they constructed these buildings with the tools that they had. The materials they used were massive rocks, some weighing up to 55 tons each. The stones were either pushed up the mountain by the bare hands of hundreds of men or chiseled from the side of the mountain itself. To combat the fact that Peru is extremely earthquake prone, every building built in Machu Picchu was made earthquake resistant. When an earthquake does strike, it is said that the, so the stones settle in even stronger. The rocks are so precisely cut, as you can see, that you cannot even push a knife between them. Not to mention that no mortar was used in the process. In 2007, Machu Picchu was voted one of the new seven wonders of the world. The builders of over 150 buildings in the city worked very hard and evidently chose their materials very wisely. You can't build without materials. And you must choose your building materials in order to build. And you must choose them well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 12, it says, Anyone who builds on that foundation may use a variety of materials. Gold, silver, jewels, wood, hay, or straw. 
Now, whenever God has a building project in mind, he always gives instructions regarding the materials. When Noah built the ark, God told him, Genesis chapter 6, verse 14, build a large boat from cypress wood and waterproof it with tar inside and out. Then construct decks and stalls throughout its interior. When an altar was built, God was very specific about the materials. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 25, it says, If you use stones to build my altar, use only natural uncut stones. Do not shape the stones with a tool, for that would make the altar unfit for holy use. God had specific requirements for the materials that were used. When the tabernacle was built, God used his people to donate all the necessary materials. In Exodus chapter 25, verses 8 to 9, it says that God said, Have the people of Israel build me a holy sanctuary so I can live among them. You must build this tabernacle and its furnishings exactly according to the pattern I will show you. And then in chapter 35, verses 20 to 29, it says the whole community of Israel, all whose hearts were stirred and whose spirits were moved, came and brought their sacred offerings to the Lord. They brought all the materials needed for the tabernacle, for the performance of its rituals and for the sacred garments. Both men and women came, all whose hearts were willing They brought to the Lord their offerings of gold, brooches, earrings, rings from their fingers, and necklaces. They presented gold objects of every kind as a special offering to the Lord. And all those who owned the following items willingly brought them. Blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat hair for cloth and tanned ramskins and fine goatskin leather. And all who had silver and bronze objects gave them as a sacred offering to the Lord. And those who had acacia wood brought it for use in the project. And all the women who were skilled in sewing and spinning prepared blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen cloth. All the women who were willing used their skills to spin the goat hair into yarn. The leaders brought onyx stones and the special gemstones to be set in the ephod and the priest's chest and the priest's chest piece. They also brought spices and olive oil for the light, the anointing oil, and the fragrant incense. So the people of Israel, every man and woman who was eager to help, in the work the Lord had given them through Moses, brought their gifts and gave them freely to the Lord. God laid out what he expected for materials and God's people responded. And when they responded, they blessed the work of the Lord. A little while ago, we took the opportunity to collect an offering, tithes. I just want to encourage you, friends, as we uh, give to the Lord for his work to continue to go forward. In many ways, that is a part of the material that God uses. God uses funds. He also uses many other things. And this coming Sunday... Uh, next Sunday, when we gather together in the parking lot, uh, I'm going to be needing some workers. And if you are a willing worker to be able to help in the parking lot or to be able to be a blessing in, in guiding and directing, uh, uh, please contact me at contact at clc413.com. God wants us to all work together so that his purposes can be accomplished. And it's exciting to be a part of a body of believers that gather together united in heart to move forward for the glory of God. And I'm so blessed that here at Christian Life Center, we have so many willing workers 
who are willing to say, yes, Lord, I will serve and I will follow your lead. And so whatever we do, we do it as unto the Lord. Whatever we give, we give it as unto the Lord. And these are the materials that God uses to build his work on the foundation that is already laid. When David was about to die, he instructed Solomon regarding the materials that were set aside to prepare for building the temple. In 1 Chronicles 22, verse 11, he said, Now, my son, may the Lord be with you and give you success as you follow his directions in building the temple of the Lord your God. I've worked hard to provide materials for building the temple of the Lord. Nearly 4,000 tons of gold, 40,000 tons of silver, and so much iron and bronze that it cannot be weighed. I have also gathered timber and stone for the walls, though you may need to add more. You have a large number of skilled stonemasons and carpenters and craftsmen of every kind. You have expert goldsmiths and silversmiths and workers of bronze and iron. Now begin the work, and may the Lord be with you. God had a tabernacle built. He was specific about the materials that were to be used. But he did not want to be limited to the tabernacle. God had a temple built. But he did not want to be limited to the temple. His intention all along was to live inside of you and inside of me. In the, in the dedication of the tabernacle, the fire of God came down. At the dedication of the temple, the fire of God came down. And did you know that when our bodies were dedicated as the temple of the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, what happened? Tongues like as a fire came and settled upon each one. A beautiful representation that just as God had uh, ministered in the tabernacle, he had, and then ministered in the temple, and then he came to minister and to live in each one of us. I think that's such a beautiful picture of how the presence of the Lord shows up in wanting to use us, in wanting to flow through us, and wanting to bring glory to his name through our lives. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 20 and 22, it says, Together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. Through him, you are being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Isn't that amazing? That God has chosen to live inside of you and inside of me. 1 Corinthians 3.16 says, Don't you realize that all of you together are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God lives in you. The Spirit of the living God lives in you. And then on to verses, uh, back to verses 13 to 15 of 1 Corinthians. It says, On the judgment day, fire will reveal what kind of work each builder has done. The fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, that builder will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. There are those who will be saved because they are on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. But some will suffer great loss 
because they did not choose their materials wisely. It's sobering to know that some will barely make it into God's presence and their work will all be burned up. It's what it says here. It says the fire will show if a person's work has any value. If the work survives, then that person will receive a reward. But if the work is burned up, the builder will suffer great loss. The builder will be saved. You see that? This is a person who has known Christ. A person who is on the foundation, but is not choosing wisely the materials that they are building with. And so the scripture says that they will be saved, but like someone barely escaping through a wall of flames. That is a sobering thing, to think that we can enter into the presence of God by the skin of our teeth, just barely making it in. And then when we get there, all of our work that we have done, it all just burns up in the fire. Now, that is a sobering thing. But friend, the fact that you're listening to this message means that you have an opportunity to turn things around. If the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, and if you know that you have been missing opportunities to be able to get the materials that God intended for you to have, then I want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to allow the Holy Spirit to give you the ability to see what he sees, to hear what he hears, so that you will be able to understand the blueprint that God has in mind for your life. That he wants to build you to make you strong so that you won't be like a person who is back and forth with the winds of circumstance, but that you'll become rock solid in God. That no matter what happens in your life, you won't always question everything, but that you will learn to trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The scripture tells us that we are to acknowledge him in all of our ways and he'll direct us. He'll guide us. And God has a beautiful plan for your life. But you have to submit yourself to him in order for that to come to pass. It's so important that you and I allow God to help us to get those right materials so that whatever we build is going to last. That it will not be here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, the faith that is fickle is a faith that is not firmly rooted and grounded in the Lord. My prayer for each one of us is that our faith will be strong. When the fire tests our building materials, what's going to happen? Will we come out on the other side with everything uh, and it not be burnt up or Will our materials be like straw and hay and wood and those things that will be burned up in the fire? You and I can avoid great loss. Oh, praise God. We can avoid that. We don't have to be like that person who is on a good foundation but has not chosen wisely the materials that they are building with. And so we can prepare now. We can take opportunity to seek the Lord now. We can be obedient to God's word now. And you and I can, by doing so, go shopping at God's depot. And he's got everything that we need to build a fireproof building. God's word tells us that he has given us everything we need to live a godly life. Take God's word and eat it daily. And as you do, it'll come, become nutrition to your soul. And you will be stronger in your faith because faith comes by hearing the word of the Lord and putting it to practice. But you need to hear the word of God. You need to allow the word of God to constantly be in your mind. And that's why God tells us that we are to meditate on his word regularly. This is so important for you and for me. We get so busy in life, but we need to make sure that we take time to eat God's word. 
Just like we take time to eat meals during the day, we need to remember that it's critical for our spiritual nutrition. In Revelation 13, 8, Jesus said these words, I advise you to buy gold from me, gold that has been purified by fire. God will give us the materials that we need if we seek after him to find those materials. And as we are obedient to him, then when our work on earth is done, the Bible tells us that every one of us will receive our reward. Jesus said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give to every person according to his work. What kind of work are you doing for God? Now, this isn't about salvation here, remember. Because this person that's being referenced in this passage is a person that does get saved. They do make it into heaven, but barely. And all their work is lost. None of us can work our way to heaven. There is no price that any of us could ever pay. I've said that over and over and over again. But this is another portion that we need to understand in our walk with God that though the price has already been paid for our salvation, uh, may it not be that we sit there on our concrete slab and go, wow, this is a great foundation. I love this foundation. I don't really want to build anything on it, but this is really great. May God give us the courage to select our materials wisely and to get busy for the glory of God. And as we turn our ear to the Lord, we'll be able to hear his direction just as he spoke to Noah, just as he spoke to those who he instructed regarding the building of the tabernacle and the building of the temple. So God will speak to you. He'll show you what he wants you to do. He'll help you to be able to get the right materials. But you've got to turn your attention toward him. And as you do, God's got great things in store. Oh, it's so wonderful that the same God who made everything out of nothing is the same God who can give you the building materials to get the job done. The scripture tells us that unless the Lord builds the house, the labor labors in vain. So if you and I allow God to guide our direction in the things that we do in following his blueprint, then God is going to fulfill his plan and purpose for you and for me. Now, as David said to Solomon, so I say to you today, now begin the work, he said in 1 Chronicles twenty-two sixteen, 16, and may the Lord be with you. Begin the work and may the Lord be with you. Choose your materials wisely and build according to God's blueprint for your life. The finished product will be better than you could ever imagine. I want to invite you to turn your attention to the Lord with me this morning. If you could bow your head and close your eyes right there where you are and shut out any distraction. If you're listening this morning, and the Holy Spirit has been prompting you, you know that you need a firm foundation. You, it's not so much right now about the materials. You just need to get a good foundation. Maybe the Spirit of the Lord has been speaking to your heart and you know you need to get your life right with God. You know that if today were your last day on this earth that you would not be ready to meet Jesus. Friend, you don't have to wait. Why wait any longer? If you tell yourself, well, maybe later, friend, you're not guaranteed later. You don't know whether you have later. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. If you're willing the Holy Spirit can come in and change and transform your life. You can be born again. 
Bible says that with our mouth we confess and with our heart we believe. And if you're willing to do that, I would love to lead you in a prayer this morning. And as you pray this from your heart, the Bible says that God is going to come in and wash you clean. All the guilt, all the shame, it's all going to be washed away. So I invite you now to join with me in this prayer. And as we pray together, be assured that God is listening. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving your life on the cross. Thank you that you loved me so much that you were willing to give everything for me. I choose you as my firm foundation. I choose from this day forward to live my life in obedience to your word. I choose to honor you in the things that I think about, the things that I say, and in my attitude. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sin. Thank you for washing me clean and making me brand new. Thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit to live inside of me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer from your heart, and I warmly welcome you to the family of God, a few steps that are important for you. If you don't have a Bible, uh, it's important that you get one, and we would be glad to get you one. Simply communicate to us at contact at clc413.com, and we will be glad to communicate with you and to provide you with a Bible. And then when you get your Bible, read it. A good place to start is the book of John. It's not so important that you read a whole bunch. It's important that you understand what you're reading. And before you read, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand it. Secondly, talk to God, just like you talk to anybody else. God doesn't need big, eloquent words to be impressed. He simply wants to hear your heart. And then it's important to gather together with people who love Jesus. We're looking forward to the day when we can be back together in the sanctuary. But until that day comes, I invite you to tune in. We're looking forward to God guiding and directing every step. And you need to also take the step of getting baptized in water. And so that's something that I'd love to be able to talk with you about as well. So feel free to communicate with us and we'll be glad to set that up with you. To everyone watching, I want to read these words from 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. It says, These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, It will bring much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Maybe you love Jesus. You've been walking with him. Maybe you'd like to upgrade your materials this morning. Would you like to do that? I want to... I want to pray for you this morning that the Holy Spirit will guide you so that you won't select things that are just cheap and easy to build with, but that you will choose materials of substance that will last for a long time for the glory of God. I want to pray for you now, and as I do, I want to invite you right there where you are to pray along with me, to open your heart to God and say, God, maybe in this area I need to uh, do a little bit more diligence in building with different kinds of materials. God is so gracious. He says, if you lack wisdom, ask for it, and he'll give it to you without scolding you. 
So just open your heart to him. He's so willing to help you. I'd like to pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every person that is watching and listening that loves you, they're saved, they have a foundation, but they, they need to upgrade their materials. Lord, I pray that you would give them discernment, that they will not choose cheap counterfeit materials for a project that needs the best. Lord, I ask that their time spent with you will be time that is valuable, time that is precious. I pray, Heavenly Father, that when they hear your voice speaking to them, that they would respond in obedience. And I ask, O oh Lord, that you would give them courage to use the gifts they already have, whatever it is. Maybe you've given them a voice to sing. Maybe you've given them the ability to build something, to create something, to do something that will be a blessing. Lord, I pray that they will use those gifts. And your word says that as we are faithful with what you've given us, you entrust us with more. God, I ask that you would touch your people and may they have every material on hand that is needed to complete the work you have in mind for them to do. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. I welcome you to join us next Sunday as we celebrate together the arrival of the precious Holy Spirit on this planet. Remember, Jesus himself said, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. Did you catch that? He wouldn't have come if Jesus hadn't have left. If I do go away, Jesus said, then I will send him to you. John 16, verse 7. And praise God, that's exactly what Jesus did. So we look forward to celebrating Pentecost Sunday next Sunday with you. Now, may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Amen. God bless you and have a wonderful day in the presence of the Lord.